الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبارك وسلم أما بعد الحمد لله after our discussion of last week where we discussed in regard to destiny we will continue with the topic of the attributes of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in this kitab of Bahari Sharia we find that the first topic of discussion is in regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now it is very important for every Muslim, for every one of us to know who is Allah, what are His attributes, and how do we address Allah, and what is the manner we should address Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So continuing, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all confines of direction, place, time, motion, idleness, form, shape, and everything else which is hadith. Understand, we discuss what is hadith when we were first discussing the first lesson. So, if you understand what is hadith, then it is very easy to understand this point. That there is no direction, there is no place, there is no idleness, there is no form of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is free from all that. Now the point is that when will we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We as believers, when will we get the opportunity to see Allah? So it is not only a fact, but a reality that on the day of Qiyamah, every Muslim will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in this dunya, in this dunya, the only personality which has been blessed and which has been blessed with the divine vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the beloved Habib Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And yes, that is the aqeedah of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's vision, the divine vision was seen by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he went, in, when he went on Mi'raj and in Surah Najm, when we read the ayahs of Surah Najm, the, in the uh, Surah Najm, the init- initial verses, we find the incident of Mi'raj. Continuing, that how will one see Allah? It could be a question. Because when you see an object, you are either going to see it from the front or you're going to see it from the back or you're going to see it from under or you're going to see it from the right or you're going to see it from the left. So that question could come into someone's mind that it could either be from distance or it could be from closeness and Allah is free from all this. Now you must know that the Salafis and the Wahhabis believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on the arsh. We don't say that. That is not our belief. And they quote from the Quran, Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa. We say no. That is not the belief because we cannot assign a place for Allah. There is no place which can be assigned because He's free from place, He's free from space, He's free from motion, He's free from idleness. So all this is basically the, the sifats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question is, how will we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? as he's free from all that. So this is a natural question which anyone can have. So the answer to that is that there is no room of any how and why. If someone asks you, there is no room for how and why. The answer is that in regard to Allah, inshallah, when we will see, that's when we can answer because we do not know ourselves and there is no need to ask how and why because that's when we are now spoiling and, and destructing our iman. Continuing with the next belief. Is Allah, Allah is absolutely and divinely supreme. He does as He wills in whichever manner He wills. None has any control or power over Allah. And there is none who can divert or stop Him from doing what He wills. There is no one who can stop Allah from what He desires. Allah can change a situation for us. We learned about destiny. Allah can change this situation for us in a split of a moment. So He has control over everything and nothing has control over Allah. He neither, he neither dozes or sleeps. There is no sleep or dozing for Allah. 
He neither becomes tired or fed up. You know, sometimes we, as the creation, we get tired of something, fed up. But Allah does not get tired or fed up of anything. He is more compassionate to us than our own parents. Allah loves us more than our own parents. And He is the one who gives peace to the broken hearts, gives hope to the broken hearts. So when we are broken, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can give us peace. Now, continuing, that all excellence and greatness is for Him, Allah, for him alone. He creates the appearance of a child in the mother's womb as He wills. It is He who is the most forgiving and the acceptor of repentance. It is He who reveals His divine punishment and anger. For example, رِضَ اللَّهِ فِي رِضَ الْوَالِدِ وَسَخْتُ اللَّهِ فِي سَخْتِ الْوَالِدِ That the happiness of Allah is in the happiness of our Father. And وَسَخْتُ اللَّهِ فِي سَخْتِ الْوَالِدِ And the anger of Allah is in the anger of our parents. So when we talk of this, if we want Allah to be upset with us, if we make our fathers upset, that causes Allah's anger to come upon us. So it's very important, whilst we were discussing anger, just one example. His divine hold is the most powerful and none can be released without his will once he has been seized. It is Allah's will if he wants to release someone, if that person has been seized. Continuing, if he wills, he can cause something small to become vast and something vast to become small. He exalts whom he wills. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ It is Allah who gives us respect. It is Allah who gives us disrespect. So, it is upon him who he wishes to give respect to and who he wishes to disgrace. So it's not the worldly attributes, worldly things which give us respect. But respect comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continuing. He may grant honor to one who is disgraced and shame to the one who is respected. He guides towards the righteous path whom he wills and diverts away from it whom he wills. Some of us, Alhamdulillah, are on the path of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It is the will of Allah. If Allah wills, He will keep others on the path as well. If He doesn't will, it's not in their destiny to be on the right path. So that is in the hands of Allah as well. But that doesn't mean we stop trying. We should still propagate. We should still pass them the message. We should still tell them. And maybe they might accept what we say. Continuing. He grants his special closeness to whomsoever he wills, leaving whom he wills to be accursed. It was not in Shaitan's Iblis's destiny to be. You must know that he was, he was a teacher. He was not only a pious jinn, but he was also a teacher. And just because of what? Just because of saying that I. Me, I have been created from fire and he has been created from soil. So whenever that comes into us, you must know that that is an action of shaitan and Allah should save us from pride, ego. And we must always abstain from it. We must always think to ourselves that we are nothing. We are only, we are maybe not even capable of saying that we are the servants of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are the ghulam of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Maybe we're not even capable to connect ourselves because we are so sinful. We have so much of sins. So whenever this thought comes into us that we've done something, we have to say astaghfirullah and remove that thought because I was reading today I've, I've only got a few seconds, but I'll take a few minutes, one or two minutes. I was reading today 
regarding Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, subhanallah, a man of wisdom, a mathematician, inshallah one of the nights we'll discuss about him, but one thing which I really love is that the destruction of ourselves is when we love ourselves, when we love our praise, when we, you know, if someone praises us and we like it, and if someone says good about us and we start to like it, that is how we destroy ourselves, that's how our nafs becomes so proud, and that's the start of our destruction, going towards destruction. And such a beautiful advice. He's given so many words of wisdom, inshallah, which we will discuss in another lesson. So, the point is, that we have to be humble, we have to be good people, we have to try and strive. Remember, nothing happens instantly. It can only happen instantly by the will of Allah. But we should assure that we should become better today than we were yesterday. We should do only one action, only one action which is better than yesterday. If we never used to read our Fajr Salah, we read our Fajr Salah today, that is better than yesterday. If we can add two rakats of Nafl for the sake of Allah, we do it today, we become better than yesterday. There's only a few points left, and inshallah, we will end the topic of the attributes of Allah, which we cannot end, but for the sake of our learning, we'll move on to the Nubuwa, to the Prophethood of the, of the Prophets and the Anbiya, alayhimu salatu wassalam. Continuing, inshallah, in a few minutes we will uh, terminate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from oppression. He does not oppress anyone. He does not do zulm on anyone. He is the most magnificent. He encircles everything and there is nothing that can encircle him. You remember I mentioned that we say, a lot of people say, when you ask them, they say, Alhamdulillah, pointing towards their finger to the sky. As Allah is above, astaghfirullah, ma'azullah. No, I did mention that's wrong because nothing can encircle him. So this is what they are mentioning that he encircles everything, but nothing encircles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To give benefit and give loss is in the divine control of Allah. He helps the oppressed and brings the oppressors to justice. Nothing happens without his divine will. He is pleased with the good and displeased with the bad. It is His divine mercy that He does not command us to do things which are not within our reach. You must know. Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah will only burden us according to our capacity. That's the summary of the ayah. When we have a difficulty upon us, it's only going to be according to our capacity. It will not be more than that. Continuing, Allah does as He wills and commands whatever He wills. He has promised paradise Jannah to the believers and through His justice, He has promised Jahannam to the unbelievers, to the kuffar. His promises never change. He has promised that with the exception of kufr disbelief, He will forgive all major and minor sins, whichever He wills, whichever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. So this does not mean you sin and say that Allah will forgive us. That's not the meaning. So let's not get the misconcept out of this point. Whether we realize it or not, there are countless wisdom in every doing of Allah. All His doings are free from any motive. A motive is always inspired by a desire for some kind of benefit. And Allah is free from any such desire. His doings do not depend on any justification or cause. Through His wisdom, He has made one thing the means for another. He has created eyes for seeing, ears to hear, fire to burn, and water to quench thirst. If He wills, eyes may hear. Eyes can see, but if Allah wills, eyes may hear. It's all in the control of Allah. He is our Creator. So, the last example, when we mention about this, this is the last incident and we terminate. I've taken five minutes, I apologize. Ibrahim alayhi salam. When the unbelievers had put Ibrahim alayhi salam into the fire, now you must know that fire was very hot. 
And when he was put into the fire, Jibreel alayhi salam descended and said, O oh Ibrahim, remember that he's in the fire. Ibrahim alayhi salam is in the fire. Jibreel alayhi salam comes and asks that, O oh Ibrahim, is there, is there, do you have any need? Jibreel alayhi salam is asking Ibrahim alayhi salam that, do you have any need? What is the answer of Ibrahim alayhi salam? He could have said that this is Jibreel alayhi salam. He could have said to Jibreel that, yes, I do have a need. But what did he say? Allahu Akbar. He says, I do have a need, but not from you. Ibrahim alayhi salam says, I do have a need, but not from you. So, the point is that Jibreel alayhi salam then said, then ask him from who you have a need. When you, don't, when you have a need and you don't have it from me, then ask him who you have the need from. Allahu Akbar. Ibrahim alayhi salam answers that he knows my condition more than my clarification. Allah knows the condition more than the clarification of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, Ya naru kuni bardamu. We've read this ayah in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that Ya naru kuni bardamu wa salaman ala Ibrahim. The raw fire become cool and peaceful upon Ibrahim. On hearing this command of Almighty Allah, all the fires burning on earth became cool. Each thinking that possibly the command was for it. The great scholars have mentioned that the fire became so cold that if the word salama, you know Allah mentioned, Ya nar hukuni barra, become cold and peaceful. Now if there was no word, the scholars mentioned that if there was no word of peaceful, then the fire would have become so cold that it could have caused harm to Ibrahim alayhi salam. So look at the wisdom of Allah. that he says, Ya naru kuni barda wa salama, become cool and peaceful upon Ibrahim alayhi salam. So we've ended the topic of the attributes of Allah. We will continue to the beliefs relating to Nubuwa. Sorry, I wanted to finish this topic so that we start a new topic in our next lesson, inshallah, next week. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me if I make any mistake during the dars, during the lesson. I ask Allah to guide us. I make tawbah if I make any mistake as these topics are very delicate. I ask Allah to guide us to perform our five times salah with jama'at. May Allah guide us to be firm on the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. May Allah take us from this world.